Good morning. This is Peter Halverson, and I'm going to show you what I've been working on. Um, I'm trying to become proficient at FPGA programming, and um, this is the first project that uh, is mostly original, done by me, and uh, what I've learned here, I think, could be useful to other people trying to get into uh, Verilog FPGA programming. So what I've got is a, uh, a little board that I acquired from nanland.com. And um, you can Google that, N-A-N-D-L-A-N-D. Dot com and um, he calls it the go board and it's got a little lattice FPGA on it that's the big the, the big chip right here it's really not all that big and um, and uh, I've also got here a uh, ADC board uh, from Digilent I, I got these separately. After I finished the tutorials from Nanland, I decided to try something. And um, what my ultimate goal here is to make a, a digital oscilloscope. So um, I don't know if this is coming out, but um, this is the PMOD AD1, which is just a few dollars from the Digilent website. Okay, so um, it's working right now. You can see it's doing something. Um, I'm feeding the ADC board. Let's see, I need to hold this somehow. I'm feeding the ADC board with a DC voltage, which I can adjust. Um, right now, the voltage is 1.3 volts. And um, as I... Uh, go down, let's say, in voltage, you can see that the display goes down to zero. I'm now at zero volts. And as I go up in voltage, you see here I'm going up 0.3, point, uh, well, it just jumped to 1.4, but the display also jumps. So um, what we have here Maximum output is is here, uh, 3.3 volts, and I'm getting FF, and the, these LEDs represent a third uh, a four bit digit. So, um, so what we have is the, the ADC is a 12 bit ADC. Um, the first hex display if, uh, is uh, the first the high order four bits, then the uh, middle four bits. And I didn't have a third digit, so I used these four LEDs to uh, stand in for a fourth digit. So right now it's reading F, F, and four LEDs on F again. If I go down, let's see, now it's saying, I don't know, uh, 9A, and the low order bits are blinking like crazy. Now it's really interesting to look at uh, what's happening um, at the ADC, the FPGA to ADC interface, um, I've got uh, a two-channel scope here, and the top yellow trace is the um, clock that I created inside the FPGA, and I'm feeding this clock signal to uh, the ADC. And then the blue is the data coming out of the ADC going into the FPGA. So if I go down in voltage, see that's now zero volts. Most of the bits are zero. And as I go up in voltage, you can see that this data coming out of the ADC is, is becoming a lot of ones until finally when I get all the way up, they're all ones, um, except for the very beginning here. And that, that those initial four bits of data are in fact always going to be zero. Um, there are 16 bits that come out of the ADC and uh, the first four bits are always zero. And then, um, and then after that you have valid data because this is a 12-bit ADC. Um, okay, so what I wanna show you next 
is my setup. Um, I'm using Linux uh, Ubuntu 16, and um, I've installed the Lattice, um, the, that's the FPGA uh, manufacturer, their software for programming uh, the FPGAs. And I've got over here the, uh, the code that I did. So um, I'll post the code on my website, halverscience.net. But just a quick um, overview here. Um, here's the top level code. And um, by the way, I should mention that um, I really owe a lot to uh, Nanland, the, um, the tutorial site uh, that, uh, that, you know, goes with the Go board. And um, a lot of this stuff is essentially Nanland's uh, tutorial code, and, but, you know, heavily worked over by me uh, to, to accomplish this. So um, you're seeing here the top level, I call it read ADC top dot V, with V standing for Verilog, because I'm using Verilog. And uh, you see here uh, interface statements. Uh, this is uh, to talk to the first seven segment di digit display, the second one. Here are the LEDs. Um, this is the interface to the ADC, the PMOD uh, connector. Um, uh, this, uh, well, the switch is left over from before. Um, I don't use it anymore. And, uh, okay, here is a, uh, a loop that I've created to, um, to make the, uh, the ADC function a few times per second. And, uh, I think now it's maybe, uh, like a, a thousand times per second. And then here is the call to the ADC uh, code now, um, which then, uh, well, let, let, let's just finish here. This is the call to one of the, uh, the first uh, seven segment display, the call to the second seven segment display, uh, to the LEDs, connecting to the LEDs. And, um, uh, now I'm using the word call like in computer programming, but it, it, these computer terms are a bit misleading. Um, this is not really a computer program. This is a description of a circuit. And, and what this does here is uh, connect some, in a way it's like wires inside the FPGA to another electronic circuit, which is also in the FPGA, which I have set up in there, in here. So I've just switched now to read adc.verilog.v. And um, this, uh, this is a heavily borrowed code. Um, I, I'm, I'm using a lot of code from the Nanland website. Um, but, you know, there were changes that had to be done. It's a state machine. Um, there are, let's see, where are they? There are four states. Um, the first state is uh, the idle state where the circuit is just waiting for a trigger to get some data from the ADC. The second state is a short wait while um, the uh, ADC, which has been triggered, is starting to get its uh, the conversion going to analog to digital. Um, now there's a third state called read data bits where you actually are getting the data out of the ADC. This generates the clock and gets the data. And then um, a, a cleanup state, which really doesn't do much. And then after that, the state machine will go back to the idle state. Okay. Um, so, so I'm, I think this is going to become a, too long of a video. So I'm going to sort of pause, uh, my explanations here. What I'll do is I'll post this on my webpage and now let's take a look at the process of turning this code and here's the seven segment display, turn this code into a, a working uh, uh, um, 
bitmap, which then actually goes into the FPGA. So um, I've got my Lattice software, and I've got I've told it that I'm going to process. I'm going to use three files. One is called read ADC top. The second one is the binary to seven segment display, and the third one is the read ADC file. So I'm going to double click on run lattice synthesis. So this turns my source code into the first uh, level of um, um, machine specific. Well, I guess it's uh, is it machines? Yeah, I guess it's machine specific or FPGA specific code. Um, it's at least lattice specific. I could say that specific to the lattice manufacturer. And then um, this says, okay, um, there was nothing wrong with the code. Um, at least it, 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 it could be turned into something that could be downloaded to an FPGA. Now let's go to the really machine specific stuff. This is called place and route. So I'm gonna double click on that and it starts doing it. Now you can see that there are various phases. Um, it's running the placer part of, um, the, um, uh, of the process. That, uh, to be honest, I'm not really sure what all it's doing. Then it's going to run the router, and then it's going to run generate bitmap. And this takes time, even though it's a pretty powerful computer. Um, while we're waiting, I'll show you my setup. I've got here um, Intel NUC um, with a, a hard, um, a, a solid state drive. Um, okay, well, it's done. Okay, while we were talking, it finished. So the bitmap has been created. Now, in a terminal, I'm going to. Here, let's bring back this. Here is the command. Um, so this command, what it does is it, uh, it iceprog is, is a, 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 a open source software somebody created to take a bitmap and put it into the FPGA. So I'm going to run this uh, software that I downloaded and uh, this long uh, path uh, points me to the, this is the name of my of my uh, creation. Read ADC top, and then it added the word bitmap, and then dot bin to to say it's a binary file that um, has the bitmap. Now um, I then hit return, and over here uh, things were going to stop. Well, it went it goes by so fast that you can't even see it. Here I'll do it again. Let's see what happens when I do this. Okay, it stops, it's uploading, and, and okay, now it's it's running again, so it's... So, um, that's pretty much it. Um, I'm going to try to put more uh, useful stuff on halverscience.net so that you can see uh, how things go as I learn how to program FPGAs uh, in uh, Verilog. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye.